So Mark here from Rock Load. This afternoon, I am joined by the guys from Preacher Stone. Preacher Stone are a southern rock band all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina. The guys have recently released their fifth studio album, Five, back in March 2024, courtesy of Nono Bad Dog Productions. And the guys will be landing in the UK shortly for a short run of dates alongside good friends, Sons of Liberty and Tom Kilner. So make sure you check out the guys' socials for all the information regarding those upcoming tour dates if Southern Rock is your thing. So guys, thank you very much for joining me today. For anybody unfamiliar with yourselves, give us a little bit of history about Preacher Stone. We are Southern by birth and geography. Yeah. So we're just... I get, when Marty started the band, he wanted to create a Southern rock band and uh, and did. And I think as we've evolved, we still carry the banner of the genre, uh, but we're, we're really just a rock band from the South. I mean, everything I say, it's like everything you say is going to be Irish. Everything I say is going to be Southern. I mean, yeah, it's just yeah. the way we are. But we, uh, two songs on Sons of Anarchy, uh, the, the series Sons of Anarchy led to uh, Leonard Skinner's Simple Man Tour, Rock Legends Tour was easy top. And that just kind of opened the box for us and sent us all over the place. Yeah, it must have been quite a, um, a shift for you guys then with that sort of exposure all of a sudden from you, you'd get notoriety and... Um, it was... Did, did, it, was, did, it, did it open you, doors? I think we froze up there for a minute. Okay, did it, yeah, open, it did. open doors for yourselves? Wait, I think we're frozen. Yeah, it opened doors. Uh, it, yeah, it, 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 it led to a lot of big opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we when we got on the first Leonard Skinner cruise, we I thought that uh, we'd be playing in front of people from the south, the, you know, the southeastern United States, and nothing was further from the truth. I mean, there were people from all over the world, and we that's when I first woke up to the fact that Southern rock is alive and well in a lot of people's hearts across the world. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever, I've always wondered, did you ever fear for the genre of Southern rock? Was there ever a time when you wondered who was going to be the next iteration of Leonard Skinner, et cetera, who was going to carry the flag and carry that genre forward? Or were you always confident that there was always a a good sort of strong backline there to follow through? If, if, if I've got to be totally honest, I've never even really thought about it. Hmm. You know, yeah. I, I just, there a lot of people talk about that, but never really thought about it. I mean, there are a lot of great Southern bands. I mean, uh, some of them a little outside the genre, but you know, for you, know, you got, you got Jackal, Blackstone, Cherry, uh, people like that yeah. that are still going. Like Very smoke. You got, you got guys that, yeah, good rock and roll from the South is no, never going away. Now as a boxed labeled commodity of selling, well, this is, this is heavy metal and this is country and this is Southern rock may, maybe so, but, um, you know, Southern rock I mean, is pretty much a, a, a stamp that uh, that that was put on by somebody in the re in the record industry business. I guess you know what I mean. Yeah, and, and I throw a few more names out there. I mean, you got uh, the Georgia Thunderbolts and Otis. I mean, there there are yeah. so many good bands coming out of the South. You could trip over them. Yeah, and it, it's yeah, it, it, it's just what we do. But as you know, as as these guys, you know, play out, age out move on, die, whatever. I mean, I think the genre's in good hands. I mean, Blackberry yeah, Smoke sure. seems to be carrying the torch right now, and, and you know, we'll, we'll gladly follow that lead. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Certainly. Like the, I was saying that, you know, especially Southern Rock in the UK has had a real, real resurgence over the last number of years. You know, country as well, country Americana yeah. and Southern Rock Certainly. Seem, seems to be coming to the fore. And it's probably down to a really good quality songwriting, you know, storytelling. That's certainly, really that's certainly. really really lacked yeah. with the commercial sort of crap that's been on the radio waves over the last <laughs> number of years. Amen, amen. I'm yeah, glad I you said it. that. Yeah, yeah, he said it. We didn't. You said say it. it. I didn't, didn't say that. I'm glad it's you his, said it's that. It's his show. He can say what yeah. he wants. <laughs> you preach it, Mark. Yeah, preach I know. It, buddy. It's true, though. It's true, though. I think I think we were like inundated with um, you know, the likes of American Idol and stuff like that. There over here, we have similar yeah. stuff, but it's ten times worse in the UK. At least you guys have really vast genres showing on your shows over there. Over here, it's really. I, do, I, I don't. I don't hardly watch any of that stuff. We've yeah. actually got friends that are uh, actually uh, on on some of these shows uh, that are trying it that way. But uh, 
you know, the, the, the market over here is so big. If you, you, you don't, you don't, you're not forced to listen to it if you don't want to, because in my opinion, there's two types of music. There's good and bad. And like Ronnie <laughs> says, you get to pick what's good and bad. It's your yeah. choice, you know, yeah. and just, and luckily we found a like-minded set of people that are spreading us around now, you know, uh, even further than we've ever spread it before. So even though the band's been around for a little bit, there are a lot of folks that are just discovering it and, and we've got we've got plenty of other records to make. So, you know, we just we're just very proud of this one that we that we're making and gonna come share it with the UK. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Tell me then, like for you guys, uh, we talked about the scale of the states and we we're talking about the, that drive across yeah. the state lines. How do you guys approach trying to get yourselves out there as a band? Because obviously you could probably work within one single state and rotate and rotate. But the sheer scale of the country and mm-hmm. trying to spread that word, spread that message. How do you how do you approach that? We we play yeah. in places where they want us. Yeah, get get in the get in the van and go. Or we do fly in dates. Um, well, Ron, Ronnie just drove us back from uh, the New York State when we played up there this past weekend, and it's you know it's twelve hours. Yeah, yeah so Jim I drove us up there. Ronnie drove us back. back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. There, there, there's a reason I, there's a reason I drove up there and there's damn sure a reason Ronnie drove us back, but that's uh, you know, that's okay. But it's to your point. I mean, you go where people want you. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, for sure. there are a lot of guys that play a circuit, they play one state or two States and it's just the same eight places over and over again. And there's nothing wrong with that method, but you know, we try to go, the, the the weekend before that we were in Florida, which was almost an equal drive the other way south. Yeah, and you know I, people always ask me, they say, "Well, you know, my son wants to be in a band, and my nephew wants to be in a band. I, I hope you like riding in a van." <laughs> you know, yeah, everybody likes yeah. playing on stage. How are you at truck yeah. stop? I mean, yeah. you know, it, yeah, exactly. Well, that's the whole thing. They they think about the ninety minutes glory time on stage, and you don't think about the other you know, 22 and a half hours, how are you getting there and what are you eating and where are you staying and who's, who's buying diesel, you know? And, uh, but we, uh, we, we've, we've been around long enough and we, but we played it long enough together. Um, you know, it, it, when we drive that far, I mean, folks, they, 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 uh, they know what they're getting into when they, when they, when they buy a preacher stone show. So, and then they, luckily they still do. Yeah. Well, yeah. another thing about us being about the States being spread out and I want to mention this and I hope, some of these people hear it. Uh, we play Florida, and we had people from Pennsylvania and Wisconsin yeah. and Connecticut yeah. and all over fly to Florida or drive to Florida to see us play. So wherever we go, there's always somebody from way far away that flew in because it was a chance to catch the show. Yeah. That'll make you really want to try hard because – you know, you can't you can't really let those people down that love you enough to go to that much trouble and that much expense to see you. It's well, really humbling. There you go. It's, 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 it's it's really super humbling. humbling. Yeah, yeah. And you talked about the um idea of going where you're wanted. So is there like for example, uh, do you have some sort of network of of clubs of of promoters that you work with who specifically look for bands like yourself, Southern Rock, we, regardless of where we, they are in the country? We have we have done a lot of it independently. We've used promoters, and we we know that when we go to New York or New Jersey, it's going to be a good turnout, and we're going to sell a lot of T-shirts and CDs. And when we go to Florida, it's going to be a t- good turnout. We do that. It, oddly enough, when we go to Nebraska, which is halfway across the country, that's good too. And Georgia is good for us. And yeah, but, oddly enough, it, our hometown yeah, it, it, is not one of our hot spots. Yeah. And yeah. in answer to your question, though, there, there are different there are different promoters in different portions of the country that we'll utilize. But, you know, we're we're always actively seeking, you know, full time. So, yeah, well, the, the, the point being, if they can do more than what we do for for ourselves, you know, because we, we you know, there, there's all kinds of people that say they're promoters and say that they're this or that. And, uh, you know, me, me and me and Ronnie can do a lot more from the house and, and arranging stuff that makes more sense for the band than you know, paying somebody to do it worse than us. Yeah. But we're open to people who want to do it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah don't, don't want to alienate, alienate anybody for sure. Yeah. yeah. It is. But, it's we're, we're just like a, what they would call in the States, a mom and pops shop. I mean, we've yeah. done a lot of this on our own and yeah. we continue to remain independent. We continue to do it. And we've had some help from 
like the people that know no bad dog have helped us. And, you know, we've, we've got people in our corner, but you know, it's, it's yeah. been an independent thing and it's been incredibly rewarding. Yeah. It's white knuckle harrowing sometimes, but it's been incredibly rewarding. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a, a you fly by the seat of your pants really when you're in a band, don't you? It's like risk and Absolutely. reward, risk and reward. And oh, you've, yeah. just, you've just got to take those chances once in a while and you will, either strike out yeah. or else you'll you'll just uh you'll hit a home yeah run. you can't you can't you can't be afraid of that you can't be afraid of that if you you know we, we we like the music that we're playing and that we're writing and that we're recording and we've able to come across and meet folks like wes o'neill from the uk you know yeah. and he's like well, hey you know you guys i think there's a market for what you guys are doing so we met him and you know obviously that's growing it over there and uh we've got several folks like that over here that we've met when we've booked something and gone and played a festival or played, you know, whatever, a bar um, and, and uh, made handshakes and made friends and, and, and it just keeps growing. And we're like I said, like Ronnie said, we're, we're, it's extremely humbling and we're very, very fortunate, but uh, nobody works any harder than we do. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. And you, you talked about us, our plan for taking over the world. It's always been. One <laughs> <at a time. laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, what it's, it's not, 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 not like time. cruising on the love boat. Yeah, it's like being a Viking. We may or may not make it back home. That's another Ronnie Riddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Stranded, stranded in the UK somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be worse. Yeah, it could be worse. You could, we could be stranded. Uh, well, I, I was going to say Nebraska, but I like Nebraska too. So anyway, well, take, take, a, take a side road. I mean, you're talking about you know the music from the South. Oddly enough. You're from where one of my biggest influences hails from. Oh yeah, I am a Ben Lizzie, ben Lizzie yeah. fan to the. I mean, it's so bad it's stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark, if I keep hearing the same Phil Linet stories in the van, right up, Ronnie tells them again like he's never told them again. And Live and yeah. Dangerous is his favorite record, and I yeah. get it all. But uh, I, I love it too, though. But yeah, man, that's all of our heroes came from the UK. You know. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's kind of like the the South gave. The, the southern United States gave us rock, we feel like gave us rock and roll and the stones and the it took it and changed it and sent it back and it just keeps getting sent back and forth across the Atlantic and it it gets better you know yeah yeah it's I, better. I, I always say that I think there's like a rose tinted glasses aspect to when you're a fan of music so if you're in the UK you'll be a real fan of American music and if you're in America you probably yeah. have a real appreciation yeah. of the UK right. stuff and that's mm -hmm. probably why you guys that. are well received in the UK because you, they really appreciate you making the journey and coming across and bringing your your home flavor to the UK yeah, yeah. I, I'll buy that I mean because it seems to me to be the UK audience that we play in front of enjoys authenticity mm. uh you know uh about anything because we played with you know i mean even even in the northern northern united states when we're playing up there there's a lot of southern rock bands that are from up there that don't talk like ronnie or like me you know but but they do when they're on stage yeah <laughs> you know, it's, kind of, it's, it's, it's pretty <laughs> funny and uh you know but then uh but I mean, great bands do stuff i mean but i i seems to me to be that um i mean the uk audience is very discerning i mean they'll they they you know they'll let you know if they think you're phoning it in or you're not you're not being legit and we don't really get that because we're the same wherever the hell we go so it's it, it kind of is if you like us on the record you'll like us even probably even better live and we'll be accessible and you can come over and stand beside us and talk we're not going to go hide in the back and play mystical rock star you know, because we're just like you guys. We're just like I like our audience there. You know, they they work hard for their money. They want to come out and have a good time on the weekends, and we're we're there to make sure that they do. Yeah, yeah. And what what would be a typical week for you guys? Like, what what sort of shows? How many shows a year do you generally play? And where where does that take you across the states? Is it all we'll play as, We'll play as many as many shows a year as we can. Uh, but yeah. generally in the states, uh, your good days to play on are maybe a Thursday. But Fridays and yeah. Saturdays, every once in a while yeah. you'll catch a Sunday. There's no real, Shot. no real There's reason no to venues. be on the road Monday through Wednesday. Really? Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, unless, yeah, unless you're unless you're on a yeah. unless you're on an advertised tour with with someone, you know, doing a short run, 
um, or your, you know, your, your blackberry smoke or whatever. I mean, you know, there's only 52 weekends in a year and, uh, you know, and then the two days of the weekend, they, you know, er, er, everybody's got Friday and Saturday entertainment. That's one thing I, I do like about uh, touring in the, in the UK. Um, if there's a good band playing on Tuesday, they're there on a Tuesday, you yeah. know, and not, not so much here. I mean, you know, people are so caught up and then I guess it's so, I mean, unless, like I said, unless you're on a tour, and uh you know doing the type of things but we we go anywhere well uh, anywhere they'll they'll let us play you know like i said the further away we like we like stack two and three and four shows together because if you're sitting in the hotel room you're just spending money you're not really you're not really doing anything you know but uh but we'll uh, a typical a typical week is me and Ronnie mailing out or actually Ronnie mailing out all, all the merch like he being the mom and pop setup when you contact a band on preacherstoneband.com you're contacting the band. We don't have a front office. You, if you email, you know, and you buy something, you know, one of us is going to pack it up and we're going to hand <laughs> address it and we're going to take it to the post and we're going to mail it to you, you know, because like I said there again, until somebody can do better, better work than us, uh, you know, then, then, then so be it. We'll just do it ourselves in the meantime. You know what I mean? So we have an imaginary woman named Helen. <laughs> yeah. We blame everything on Helen. <laughs> Anything goes wrong. It's Helen's fault. Yeah. It's like, you know, well, Damn, I Helen. ordered this. Da Damn it, Helen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's not a bad plan. Not a bad plan. You, you so, touched um, on the whole idea of the, the DIY thing. Um, how do you guys yeah. sort of balance that sort of creative aspect of being a band, but then obviously the business side where you have to try and, like, as you say yourself, you have to be DIY these days. You have to do everything yourself in order to balance the books. You know, people on the, on the other side of the fence maybe don't really fully appreciate or understand what it means to be a full-time musician these days and trying to make it work for yourself. So um, do you find, well, it, I mean, find yeah. it hard with that, that side of things, you know, balancing the, the, the two sides? Certainly. Yeah, certainly. I, mean, I do. It would, I mean, you know, go ahead, it Ronnie. would be difficult if we thought about it. <laughs> I mean, if, yeah. you know, well, yeah. if we took the time True. to think about it, but it's it's just it's the stuff that has to be done. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, it's a it's a completely different headspace. Yeah. Oh, but, for sure, for sure. You, you just kind of after a while, I think you by not thinking about it, you sort of get used to transitioning from one to the other because generally, you know, you check the check the computer every morning and uh the website every morning and here's here's five or six orders that came in and yeah you you don't really need to, you don't have time to sit there and wait until you're inspired yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. to do it no, you just no. you just have to do yeah, it well luckily, luckily luckily since we dropped uh, the the preacher stone five record on the on good friday on the march 29th it's been a steady flow of orders i mean and we've been i mean ronnie can attest we've, we've been mailing them all over the dang place we're learning brand new postage laws and how hard <laughs> it is to actually mail something to the uk and yeah. you know custom forms there's you there's you there's your thing mark custom yeah. forms man yeah. Yeah. but uh did that, did that but yeah, like said, you, yeah, <laughs> yeah i hope so yeah so you get that sent out by the way sorry mark we're doing a little oh, yeah, bit I did. I, yeah, okay, yeah, this morning. <laughs> got a whole stack of them sent to the uk this morning there you go perfect uh but no, man, uh, I think I think once you realize that you're this is what you're up against and and, and you're going to be doing the stuff. And um, like I said, Ryan and I made up our mind a while ago because there, there were a lot of there were a lot of hands in the pie for, for a little while and uh, nothing was really getting done. But people were still making money. And uh, it was like, well, why are we paying you to do what we end up having to do anyway? Because, you you know, you didn't either do it or you messed it up. So. I guess there's a control freak end of that too. We know if we're doing it, it gets at least done, you know, kind of correct. But if, if if a mistake is made, then there's only two guys you can blame because Hel we're you Helen, know we're the ones that are trying Helen's to get it fault. done. Yeah, it's <laughs> Helen. Yeah, Helen. We got. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, That's our imaginary. And she. Oh, and Helen's hot, by the way. So you really can't yell at her. Yeah. You know yeah. she's stacked. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know we like I said we've we've had. Uh, opportunities to pay people or have services oh, yeah. and all and, and i'm sure they i'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that do a really good job of that stuff but as long as we can handle it we'll handle it hopefully it gets to the point where we can't handle it yeah but, yeah and, i'd like but, to have but, that problem where we'd have to hire somebody i'd love but that to get, you know but to get to that point 
there, we've got you know there's more growth to be done i mean i i would mail cds out all day i, I do that all day if that's what had to be done you know well, it, it, please it, bring, please give me that problem yeah mailing mailing cds out uh, means that people like your music you know that that people yeah, are buying sure. it and uh, you know it's a it's a sort of a, a driving home the message that what you're doing is is heading home with uh, resonating with yeah. fans all over the place isn't it it's a good way Remind, to look yeah, it. It reminds you it, it looks i mean I I love I love following the streaming numbers, you know, the streaming numbers. I mean, we've got, you know, close to 50,000 streams of the new record and it's only been out since March 29th, but when somebody physically wants to buy vinyl, you know, or they physically want something in their hand, they want it, you know, in their hand. I mean, any, you can download anything, but the fact that we still have to ship stuff all over the world is a testament to, to yeah, they 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 want to they want to spend a little extra money and they want the physical record and um that that's that's awesome that's why we printed them yeah exactly exactly and how do you guys um how do you guys approach these the the, the actual likes of the record for example so you're probably self-funded i'm assuming then so you guys are paying for everything out of your own pocket mm -hmm. yeah we've got uh, we've got a little bit of a little bit of financial backing on 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 through uh through a, a record label indie label here but uh for the most part yeah it's uh you know, it's, it's like any other record deal. When if they, if they if they loan you money, they're not loaning you. Oh, they're not giving you money. They're loaning yeah. you money. So we try to we try to work and we allocate so much back for the business and then trying to get the business to pay for the business, which Ronnie keeps all the books. Um, and um, <laughs> and it's well, the problem since, it's Helen's fault. Create, create yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Helen has a problem with uh, where where the decimal point goes uh, in the bass player pay, but other than that. Um, <laughs> But no, uh, you know, it, it does. It, we just we try to keep track of it and we budget. And uh, it's like running, you know, a marriage that has five, you know, grown ass men in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, schedule things and go make money. When we need more money, we play more and, ma and go and make more money. And then we've got to buy plane tickets. We, uh, well, we've, got, we've got some lovely, lovely help from uh, our, our manager, John Schneider. Uh, out of Florida, he's he's down that way. He's coming over to the UK with us. He came on the last trip. Uh, you know, we've got we got people in our corner that are pulling for us that won't won't want to see this succeed. And um, so that's you know that we 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 accept we accept the help. Uh, but you know, uh, we try to we try to keep it the the circle as small as we can. You know, you you mentioned about recording, and that that's one thing that you know a lot of people when you say do do it yourself. You know, they have these visions of well, we recorded in our basement and you did the lead vocals in the bathroom. But that's that is not our approach. Uh, we recorded wow. uh, Preacher Stone five at Gat three in Charlotte, North Carolina with Glenn Tabor. And yes. Glenn's been Grammy nominated and Grammy winning and all that. And it's a state of the art studio there. And we spared no expense or no time there because. Whether you record it in, you know, whether you record it yourself or whether you record it for a major label, you're still you're still competing. Yeah, it, it still has to sound worthy of somebody spending that money, and you owe it to your music to put your best foot forward, so to speak, when people hear it. So we don't skimp, and that that area is not a, you know, that that's non-negotiable. It's got to sound it's got to sound world class, or we're not happy with it. Yeah. yeah, and it, it's been a number of years since your last album's been eight years, isn't that right? Oh, I you thought we were gonna up? make it through this. I know, I thought we were gonna make <laughs> it through we this so without close. somebody bringing it up. So oh, ouch! Um, yeah, it was, brother. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, lo logistically, life gets in the way from time to time. We could blame it all on COVID, but it wasn't COVID's fault. Uh, we just kept playing live shows, or we kept writing songs. Uh, you know, we actually pre we did pre production in several other studios that wanted us to come and use their facility, as Ronnie was talking about. But none of them ever really came to fruition. And when it came time that it was time, you know, past time to put the record out, we were kind of like, well, we're going to go go with Glenn at, at, at Gap Three. And uh, well, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm never recording anywhere else. If the guys want to record in the Sound Lab or whatever, I'm going to be cutting my bass. My bass tracks will be cut in Charlotte with Glenn Tabor. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's not just the it's not just the state of the art room. It's the relationship with the producer. Yeah, yeah, and and he was able to capture who we are. And the the record for the most part was recorded live. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, so for the most we all we're all the rhythm so, tracks and stuff. Sure all the rhythm have. tracks are live, and you know solos be overdubbed, vocals of course, but um, it that that's who we are. It's what we sound like, and and there's no need to go anywhere else. Yeah. And do, do, do you think then, I was going to ask you, with that sort of time frame between the last album and this one, did it make, did it make you um, more focused? And maybe that's why you thought yourselves, when you, you go to record this one, that you wanted to spend that money, you wanted to go to the right guy, the right recording studio to make a real impression? As a uh, absolutely. Back? I mean, the, the, the yeah, pressure, I, whether you acknowledge it or not, the pressure's there because it's been a while. Yeah. That time in between gave us the opportunity to, to go out and play some of these songs live and see what was working and so they and what they evolved yeah, in and they all change, yeah they they changed they changed as we were playing them live too yeah and it's sure. it's, uh, it's worth the wait it was absolutely without a doubt worth the wait now the next one will not be that long that, look for it next fall yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, fall fall, fall, of, fall of next year yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah See, now we're under the gun because everybody we talk to, Mark, is, oh, why was it so long between records, guys? We, we, oh, we know, were playing golf. Yeah. yeah, we were playing golf and fishing. Somebody, you got to go fishing yeah. sometimes. Working on the town, you know. Mm, yeah. That's it, yeah, for yeah. sure. But you talked uh, about the, the relationship then with Glenn, because obviously you have certain bands. For example, you'd look at, say, an artist like Joe Bonamassa, who works religiously with Kevin Shirley. Um, and you're just you're sort of talking about that relationship oh. with Glenn, and you maybe think you'd you'd be confident you'd go back and work with him again then because of what yeah. he brought out of you guys in the band. Without a doubt, without, yeah, a, doubt. without a doubt, he did he did he did early, he did earlier records for uh, for Preacher Stone, and uh, the band was gaining you know uh, notoriety and stuff. So you know, obviously, you want to shop around and go do some stuff. But uh, when it comes down to it, we went back to went back to roots because he did Preacher Stone one, didn't he, Ronnie? One and two. He one did, and two. One and Uncle Buck's Vittles did our first two. Yeah. Right. Bruce Irvine exactly. did our third. That's and, right. And then we went to Echo Mountain. Echo Mountain. For fourth one. And came yeah. back home to Glenn and we found a home as far as you know, as far as we're concerned. Yeah, yeah. And after spending so many years on the road then sort of playing live, how did you feel about being in the studio again? Was it intimidating? No. No. Yeah. No, nah. Glenn. Not with Glenn. I mean, I, I personally, me, me as a person, I, I don't, I don't necessarily like going in the studio and having to do the whole thing and the whole waiting around. So I'm a live guy. But if I've got to go through that necessary evil, I'm going to Gat Three and doing it with Glenn. And uh, you know, and 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 that, that's just that's all there is to say about that. But yeah, now the studio process. These guys, half these guys, would love to live in a studio. You know, Ben and Wyatt and the guys, I mean, well, and Nick, Nick has his own studio. That's all, that's all these guys do or write songs and, and, and do things and, and judge and Wyatt does, you know, drum clinics and stuff, uh, you know, in his own personal studio and, you know, just, yeah, you shoot me right now. I just let me know what time I need to be there and you know, make sure there's a couple of cold beers and we'll, we'll get it, we'll get it knocked out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't, I don't, I'm kind of opposite of Jim. I don't hate it. I, I like the process. I just don't want to be in there any longer than I have to be in there. Yeah. Because I guess that's what I mean too. Yeah. In, for sure. In our, in our job and in, in my viewpoint of it and why I like working well with Glenn is you set the amps up in, in different rooms. So there's separation. You put the drums in the middle of the room. Everybody can see each other and count to four and let's play it until we get it right. And then we'll keep it. Um, I think I think the reason that this trip was so successful is that most of the kinks were ironed out before we even got there. Yeah. We could just go in and confidently perform yeah. the songs. You know, there were a couple songs that, that came to life once we got there, but about eight of them were pretty much this is what it's going to be. And, Boy, and you, yeah, you, 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 go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say you mentioned you mentioned over, overdubbing the solos and stuff like damage is done. If you watch the video on our YouTube channel, that video was actually cut while we were tracking the songs and solos and everything were cut in the one take and we got finished with it because it was the first one that we'd ever recorded. And we were kind of like, all right, what's next? That's a keeper. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. we don't even need to listen to it. Yeah. It sounded great. <laughs> you know, it, it, the, the great thing about Glenn was he doesn't overproduce. Mm -mm. He makes suggestions when it needs to when a suggestion needs to be made. Mm -hmm. And 
it, he's usually it's, right. Yeah, and he's usually right. And it's in fact, I don't know that he's ever wrong, but it, right. it, it's, so, it's such a I hate to use the word organic. It gets overused, but it's just such an organic process. It's just a very natural process. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that's what you want, though, isn't it? You don't want to be fighting with your producer, you know, tooth and nail. It would feel like it's an yeah. arduous process, and you'd probably look back at the recording and think that wasn't what I wanted from it. But if you have that really right. good relationship or, and as you say, organic thing, which just blooms while you're there, then it's exactly what you want. Right. Well, I'll, I'll say this, and you know, sure. to any anybody who's listening, any musicians, any band, whatever, I think the secret to our longevity is a lineup and – the success of the music that we put out is that we will try it. We, we won't sit around and yeah. argue about how something should go for 30 minutes. Just try it. Yeah. And yeah. We'll try somebody. I've got an idea. idea. Yeah. Try it. Exactly. Try yeah, it. And, sure. and you, you know, instantly whether it worked or whether it didn't. Mm. And it, there's really no discussion after that, after everybody hears it. And I think Glenn, Glenn sort of fell right into that with us and and, and we're going to try what you think. And, you know, if, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, we'll all know. Save so much time and so much aggravation and feelings being hurt when you just try it. Yeah. I mean, if you're working, if you're working with Mutt Lang in a studio and you're Joe Elliott and he's trying to put, get, push you to make this Def Leppard record better than, you know, my favorite one on through the night, by the way, you know, make, make this record better. And you hear these horror stories about fighting with the producer. I mean, those are out there too. And the success stories speak for themselves, but uh, you know, if you can find somebody that you, you blend with and they make you a better you know, performer. I, I want to make sure my bass lines are right because Glenn's gonna he's gonna solo it up. We're gonna listen to that. Like, like okay, what what were you doing there? Is this what you wanted to do there? I I, I don't want to be the guy where they stop the tape and go, what the hell was that? You know, and uh, but Glenn Glenn's uh, he's he's just a wonderful dude to work with. Man. Yeah, yeah, definitely helps. Definitely helps. And you guys brought up um, UK dates coming up and stuff like that. There, obviously, for you guys can, from the distance you're traveling, that's a big commitment as well, isn't it? Oh yes, certainly, certainly. Yes. Yeah, yeah like we, uh, not easy. Like you're talking about helpless. custom custom you know? forms for for CD, so you have to get your asses custom forms for yourselves to get across to the UK as well. Just rather not talk about that on the air. <laughs> 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 we're going to vi we're going to go visit some friends. Yeah, uh, no, uh, no, we've got no, we've got we we've talked to enough of our buddies that travel overseas, um, and we've got. Uh, uh, the, you know, like I said, Wes O'Neill, we're going to be doing some some dates with uh, with Tom Kilner starting out. Um, he's got management that's helping us out. Uh, our buddies from the Sons of Liberty, uh, Freddie and the guys couldn't have been better. That's the reason that we went over there the last time because of a friendship on Facebook between Marty Hill, our guitarist that has recently passed away, and Freddie. And uh, that's where it all came from. And uh you know, they we've got lots lots of help from that side of the pond helping out that's making it easier over here. Our our, our problem is funds, you know, because yeah. it's really expensive to bring, you know, six grown men over there and, you know, for drivers and hotel rooms and backline stuff and all of that. But we've got so many people pulling for us and helping us that, uh, you know, we just kind of walk around in the days, you know, it's like, watching the Beverly Hillbillies, the Clampets go to Britain, <laughs> you know, type of thing. So, and, and that's why, I mean, that's why it was when we went to Europe, when we went to Germany, when we went to the Czech Republic, you should have seen us there, dude. I mean, it's actually out on, on, uh, on, on our YouTube channel, 19 days in Europe. Uh, it's, it should be a Monty Python skit. <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah. The, the stories I do hear from the road from bands <laughs> yeah, it well, makes, it makes you want to rethink your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Stay in school, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> the, the funny thing, the funny thing is, I mean, you're right. I mean, it's it's a it's a big undertaking. Yeah, but God, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, I can't imagine doing anything else. It's kind of like building a ship in a bottle. You know, those old ships that used to be in a bottle. I mean, yeah. It's it's tedious, but when it when it goes off, when it when it works. It, it's the coolest feeling that you you were able to do that. Well, that's, that's and, uh, this is this is why you got into a band in the first place, wasn't it? Really, you know, these this is what the dream is, yeah. and you know, yes, yeah, sometimes sometimes, sure. sometimes oh, yeah. you make money, sometimes you lose money, sometimes you break even, but you know, the life experiences yeah. you're going to well, have. From well, these that's journeys. the thing. 
Yeah, you know, you've got lots of lots of talented musicians playing in tribute bands that you know they're, they're going and doing the thing. You know, traveling across the state line or traveling across you know you know the country in the United States or going across. See, you're playing your own original music. You talk about feeling naked and you're kind of wide out there. We don't we don't have the Bon Jovi song to fall back on if somebody doesn't like it. You know, yeah, it yeah. is what it is. So, and you know, our goal always has always been. I mean. You know, everybody says, well, they're in a band and their goal is to make it, you know, they're going to be Led Zeppelin. They're going to be Aerosmith. And sure, our goal has always kind of been, let's be better tomorrow than we were yesterday. And let's be a little yeah. further up the ladder tomorrow than we are today. Yeah, yeah. You have to stay and, humble. Yeah. You have to stay humble, don't you? Yeah, well, it's, it's more of a trajectory thing than it is an end goal thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's a trajectory. You brought that up in another interview. I was watching you on, Ronnie. You know, yeah. it's more about trajectory than it is the end game. We're not trying yeah. to make the cover of the Rolling Stone. We're, mm -hmm. try we're trying to, you know, you just keep going because a lot of us, have, we've all had record deals independently away from this band, you know, and we've loved and lost and we've, you know, we've been screwed over and we've, but this, this group of guys together in preacher stone are together because they want to be together. And we all kind of make the copy music that we think that other folk, well, that we like. And like I said, then it's just gravy that everybody else. So that's, that's coming on board is liking it as well because we'd be playing it anyway. Yeah. And, and it, it really, there's a certain faction of people that really connect to this and there's a bond there and you, you keep going, not only for the set, you know, not only for your desire to perform or your desire to it's the creative process I have to have, or I'm not a very happy person, but then right. you go places and play and meet people who connect with you and it means so much to them that now you kind of feel responsible for them as well that we got to give them something else to listen to. It's it's really a beautiful thing. I mean, I'm extremely thankful to be able to do this. I mean, just to be sure. able to is is incredible. Yeah, it must and, be it must be quite rewarding when you do go back somewhere and the crowd has grown from the the last time you were there, you know, so yeah. you can, you can sure. see the work the work in the graph paying off. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I agree. totally agree. Beautiful, and and remind us again, guys. When are your UK dates coming up? I've got them right here. Saturday, Where July. Right, really? Saturday, <laughs> Saturday, July thirteenth will be in Bristol at the Louisiana with Tom Kilner. Saturday, July fourteenth will be at the Patriot in Crumlin, the Wales. Patriot, the Patriots, with, yes, with uh, <laughs> with Tom Kilner. Also with Tom Kilner on Wednesday, July the 17th at Feathers Inn in Litchfield. Thursday, July the 18th, we're going to be in Swindon at the Vic Victoria. The Vic. The place we absolutely love. With absolutely. Uh, the Sons of Liberty. Friday, July 19th, the Phoenix in Exeter with Sons of Liberty. Saturday, July 20th, the Treehouse in Froome. I said yes. it right. Froome. Yeah, Froome. With, with the Sons of Liberty. And then Sunday, July the 21st, We'll be at we'll be kicking off Sunday at the Made of Stone Festival. And on that yeah. bill will also be Mr. Big, Living Color, These Wicked Rivers, and Yarkin Larkin Poe. Lark yeah. Larkin Poe. Yeah, it's gonna be a fantastic. We were coming over for the festival anyway. And then Wes was like, Well, let's put some dates together and like play some of these other rooms. And then Freddie and the guys from Sons of Liberty were like, No, you're not coming over without playing with us. So what went from Flying over to do a festival ended up to a, like a like a nine day run. So there we go. Yeah, well that's great. As you but, say, it's all about nurturing relationships, and clearly the guys from like the Sons of Liberty and Tom Killer, etc., yeah. want to help, want to support. It's all about that sort of uh, yeah. brotherly love and make sure they can give you a helping hand yeah, when you're here we, in the UK. We, you can't you can't even buy that, man. It's it's yeah. just fantastic. I know. Yep. No, I got. I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm sorry. I'm about 15 <laughs> minutes late from an appointment. Mark. Oh dear. I'm sorry, sorry, brother. Yeah. No. 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 I love well, look, talking with you, my friend. We'll, we'll wrap it up anyway. We'll, we'll wrap it up anyway because we've I've kept you long enough. Cool. But um, listen. Lovely no, talking great. to you guys. Lovely talking to you guys. Absolute pleasure. Absolute yeah. pleasure, man. It's our pleasure, and uh, and yeah, come come see us. Actually, we hope hopefully get over to your island. That yeah. would be great. He said it's. It's nothing but a boat ride, Ronnie Riddle. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. It's, keep an eye. There's a <laughs> keep an eye. There's a Roy Gallagher Blues Festival, which happens every year up in Donegal. You know, get yourselves on the bill there. They'll appreciate a good Southern rock band for that. 
That'd be we'll perfect. We'll we'll get we'll get our people on it, Mark. But all the best, man. And we appreciate Rock and Load for uh, for talking with us. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go get a haircut right now. She's yeah, looking you, at me. You She's need it, Mom. Real, real hot, real hot German chick. Real hot. <laughs> she uses a straight razor on my neck. So <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I told her I'd be in at four, and it's four fifteen. But no, no thank problem. you so much, my friend. Take my pleasure, time guys. Us, look man. look after yourselves. Best of luck with the UK tour. I'll try and get somebody sent along to one of the shows and get you covered. So we'll we'll be in thank touch. Thank you. We'd love yeah, that'd Thank be you. good to tell him to come in. Beers are on Ronnie. Sweet. Wow. Happy days. Okay, guys. Right. See you later. <laughs> Take care.